Hello there, welcome to another quick tip video. Now more recently, we've been looking at how to build your own synthesizer patches using Retrolog 2. But today we're going to look at something really cool. We're going to look at how you can control various parameters of Retrolog 2 using an external controller, but more importantly, using VST node expression. Let's start with an external controller. I'm right mouse clicking on the reverb time, selecting modulation wheel and enable modulation wheel. Now I'm selecting it again and saying set maximum. As I move the modulation wheel up and down, the highest value I have access to is the value I specified when I set the maximum using the right mouse menu. Let's go over to the main window in Retrolog 2 and do a quick recap of the last video. In the last video, we picked up on the icon of the modulator and dragged it over to a parameter, in this case, the cutoff. Now, my LFO is controlling the cutoff using a low frequency oscillator. Bearing in mind that I've just assigned the reverb time to the modulation wheel, I'm once again right mouse clicking and enabling the modulation wheel. Now I'm controlling the reverb time and the parameter of my low frequency oscillator. So you can see that it's easy to combine a number of different parameters to the modulation wheel. Once again, I'm setting the variable, so the maximum and the minimum, just by right mouse clicking and accessing that menu. So it's very easy for us to assign external controllers to specific parameters inside of Retrolog 2. Retrolog 2 takes on incredible new powers when it's combined with Cubase. Once you've recorded your MIDI data into Cubase, you can open up the key editor and then click on the Node Expression tab. Make sure you select Show Node Expression Data and now we can start drawing in Node Expression Data for any of these parameters on the left-hand side, for instance, the tuning. I'm selecting my pen from the toolbox, going back down to that new box, and it's a matter of drawing in new data. At the moment, Snap to Grid is on. So if I turn off Snap to Grid, I can free draw in node expression data. I can also use the line tool to accurately draw in perfect lines over the top of each individual note. Applying tuning data over one specific note is not in itself revolutionary, but the fact that we can do it over one note in a MIDI channel and not affect any of the other MIDI data or MIDI notes in the channel is extremely revolutionary. Because it's not just tuning data, it's any number of parameters inside of Retrolog 2 that we can start to affect or control using note expression. For instance, cutoff on this one specific note. My tuning's going down, but my cutoff's going up. So it's pretty easy to draw in I guess note expression data that relates to those note expression parameters that we've got on the left hand side. But what if we don't want to use those parameters on the left hand side? What if we want to custom design our own? Well this is where this VST note expression becomes more than just a revolutionary process. It becomes slightly mind-blowing because we can create our own set of rules. So down the bottom I've selected oscillator 1 pitch. Now I'm going and finding a blank note expression slot. So if I go down to the note expression menu, you can see parameter 3 is free. As soon as I select that, over on the left hand side, you can see oscillator 1 pitch is available as a note expression. And I can start to draw in this note expression data. Not just for one note, but every note, every individual note inside of the key editor. Let's repeat that process. So I've selected a blank note expression slot. And now it's a matter of just basically matching that note expression up to a parameter that we want to be able to control on each individual note. You can see just how many different parameters we can control. Now I've selected distortion, so I can select distortion from my note expression panel and draw in distortion changes. It's pretty cool. Of course I can go and change the types of distortion available to me in the filter section. It almost makes me wonder if things like sound design and automation with regard to VST instruments have taken on a completely new meaning. Because rather than being reliant on things like general MIDI parameters, and we only had so many of them, we can now go in and edit these individual notes. 
which means we've got access to so many more possibilities in our overall sound. And it even gets better than that. In the controller lane down the bottom, I'm selecting modulation. Don't forget before we assigned a number of parameters to the modulation. So now we can actually go and draw that modulation data in on the key editor window. I'm giving you a very quick overview of VST node expression and I don't have the time in one quick tip video to give it the time that it deserves because it does a whole lot more than what I've just shown you. Anyway, that's a topic for another video. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. We'll catch you soon.